as I indicated to you, today being the last of the key points before election day, December 7, exactly a week away from today. By this time, voting will be ongoing. And we here on your election command center will be giving you everything you need to know, all the coverage and all the exclusive detail and interviews and analysis and the conversation in and out of the studio. So stay with us every step of the way as we build up strongly to December 7, seven days away. But we have December 2, that is on Monday. We have the special voting taking place as well. So we have a special coverage for that. And please bear that in mind. Now, um, joining me in the studio is uh, the former chair of the Interministerial Committee on Illegal Mining, a former minister for the Environment, Science, Technology and Innovation Ministry and former CEO of Kolebu Teaching Hospital and the Cardiothoracic Centre and many other things that he has done in contributing to the development of this country. Headed the, the Ghana Red Cross Society, so many, so many things. We can spend the whole day talking about the contribution that this man has made to the development of this country. I'm talking about none other than Professor Kobna from Prof, good morning. Welcome. Good morning. Thank you for having me on the program. It's good and to have you. Sitting here with these wonderful people. <laughs> <laughs> we are privileged. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to have you make time to join us for all this all-important conversation. I still have Dr. Atta Kennedy with us on Zoom, connecting with us as well. And Professor Ranswo Jampo is still with us, and, and lawyer Martin Pebo. Professor Kwabena from Pomboating. Sitting back and, and looking at how especially things are playing out now with respect to accountability and taking responsibility for what is done by leadership, are you concerned that we are not making progress in solving the leadership problem that we're faced with as a country? Prof. Yes, uh, thank you very much. This is a very important question. I believe that <clears throat> we haven't made any headway and we've had leadership crisis for a very, very long time. This is not recent. Uh, not only Ghana, but Africa as a whole. Uh, after all, leadership is, you know, uh, the function of leadership is to meet the necessities of a population, you know, mm -hmm. maybe uh, any biological population, it can be a family, uh, can be a group of ants, termites, human beings. So human beings, our basic needs are food, shelter, clothing, health, and defense. Mm -hmm. You know, these are the basic needs that leadership has to provide. And beyond this are uh, ways to prepare the population for future challenges or emerging challenges such as uh, climate change, uh, globalization and so on. So mm -hmm. leadership is very important. Um, but there are certain qualities that we, sh we should have. And we haven't had that for a long time. We haven't yeah. had the qualities you're going to talk about? Yes. In, in leaders in this country? Yes. For, okay, tell me about it. You know, I mean, we can say Art Nkrumah because he came and he wanted to do something. I mean, I have not attended any leadership seminar before, but from my own uh, life, if you want to achieve something, if you want to leave a legacy, if you want to do something for your people, you have to sacrifice, you know. Mm -hmm. And so we haven't had that kind of leadership. I'm, when I'm talking about leadership, I'm not talking about one person, mm -hmm. but close leadership that have, has an aim. Let's take the U.S. There are several examples, for example. Mm -hmm. If we take the U.S., the signatures of the uh, Independence Declaration, when they met together in the State House of Pennsylvania, uh, they said, look, uh, God has, uh, all men are created equal, and endowed by their nature with certain inalienable rights, among which are life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. And when they said all that, they made a very profound statement. And they said that in support of this declaration, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our wealth, and sacred honor. See, they pledge their lives, their wealth, and sacred honor so that America will survive. And there were 56 people. We haven't had that kind of focused, dedicated leadership prepared to sacrifice for the unborn generation. It hasn't happened. And, we should, and sometimes we don't even consider character. 
Ghana, we don't consider character. We see people who have bad character, we think that when they become president or leaders, they, they, they'll change. No. The position will expose who they are. So this is what I'm saying, that character, dedication, focus, being prepared to sacrifice for the people, and giving hope. And this is one thing that worries me. Three things worry me in this Ghana right now. Hope. See, young people have lost hope in old people, in, in, in national systems, and so on. And they are going out. We see it from the hospitals and so on. You go, you go to work and then your doctor is not dead, the nurse is not dead, mm -hmm. the Christian is gone, and they've lost hope. And then this corruption that we don't want to mention in public, it's, it's a worry. Corruption. And also the, how we treat the environment. You know, we treat uh, our environment. That is, these are the things that will ensure our mm -hmm. long-term survival. Uh, you talk about uh, uh, lost hope um, on the part of the young people. You will concede that your generation of old people, you failed us. You, you, this group of leaders, you failed us, the young people. Yeah, young people are entitled to say that. I mean, I have children, I have grandchildren, I know what they tell me. Uh, uh, but I don't want to be among a group that has filled these young people. I want to say something, I want to do something mm -hmm. uh, so that something can be done, restore hope to young people. Right. Uh, but as you said, yes, in a way, because when I entered the University of Ghana many, many years ago, I think there were about just 3,000 students in the, the university, mm -hmm. and uh, I had a room to myself. I think the first year I shared, from second year or third year, I had my own room. Uh, we had uh, uh, stewards, no, uh, well, people coming to dress our best. We were mm -hmm. given toilet roll thrice a week. You could go to a dining hall and eat three times a day or something. I, I mean, it was fantastic. We, we, we live free, but we grow up, people my age, maybe younger and a little bit older, and instead of maintaining that kind of system where students will get accommodation on campus, we spend money, board hostels, so that the students will come and rent and we get money. That is one thing that I really uh, see that is wrong. You talk about corruption, really. And uh, consistently, when this matter comes up, the government of the day has indicated they are, they, they are actually winning and making progress in the, with the fight against corruption in this country. What's your verdict? You see, if we have a beautiful country like Ghana, uh, 234,000 square kilometers, intelligent people at home and abroad, a lot of resources, and so on, and you are still in this, station, uh, this situation, then there's something wrong. And then the, the thing that is wrong is corruption. That will not, uh, is not helping us to develop. I don't think we've gotten grips of it. Anybody who tells you that you are fighting it seriously is not telling you the truth, or I don't consider it as a as something that is serious. Well, that's what the president says, that the government is doing well in the fight against corruption. Well, I, I, you know, the president has his opinion and he's entitled to it, uh, but I, I disagree with him. But the point is, let's not, uh, let's not be personal about uh, this leadership thing. Let us define it, so not only for what is happening now, so that the next leader or the next government will know what to do, mm -hmm. that leading this country will mean sacrificing, you know, that it's not you and your family that should enjoy, make money, disrespect us, and then expect us to worship you. No, we, we are in charge of millions of people and you are the leader, we must sacrifice for the survival of this country, giving hope to young people and those, the uh, generations that are yet to come.